Confused about the cosmos? Can't tell a planet from a star? Then give us just five minutes and we'll show you what they are. Jack Horkheimer, Stargazer, tells you all about the night sky and the biggest show of all, the universe. And now, this week's episode. See the skinniest moon of the year. And has Jupiter made a comeback? Hey there, Stargazers. I'm Dean Regis from the Cincinnati Observatory, and I'll be your guest host this month on Stargazer. Next week, you'll have a good chance to spot a very young moon just after sunset. Now, everybody has heard of the new moon, but what does the new moon really mean? Well, in astronomy, the term new moon means the same as no moon. It marks the moment when the sun and the moon are in precisely the same direction in the sky. And unless there's a solar eclipse going on, you won't see the moon at all because its lit up face is pointing away from us here on Earth. So we'd be trying to see the dark unlit side of the moon, which doesn't work very well. Now next Friday, February 4th, you'll have a good chance to spot a very young moon that's less than two days old or less than two days past new. Go out next Friday, February 4th, and watch the sun set. As the sky starts to get dark, look just above the horizon where the sun went down, and if the clouds cooperate, you should be able to spot a very skinny young moon. It will be less than 3% lit, which means that most of the sunlit side of the moon is facing away from you. The best time of the year to try to see this very young moon is in January, February, and March, because at this time of the year, the moon's path through the sky is nearly vertical, which means that it gets higher and farther away from the sun sooner and gives you a better chance to see a very young moon. In some cultures, the actual sighting of this young moon is used to determine when their months begin. And in this case, the term new moon is used to refer to the actual sighting of this very young moon. But that's not how it's used in astronomy. If you can't spot the moon Friday night because of clouds or whatever, all is not lost because higher up in the sky, Jupiter will be very bright and still putting on quite a show with its family of moons circling around it. Notice that the line of moons around Jupiter is nearly vertical with respect to the horizon. The same effect that makes the young moon easy to see is also at work here with Jupiter's moons. A really special event with Jupiter's moons Friday night will be the sudden brightening and appearance of Jupiter's biggest moon, Ganymede, as it passes out of Jupiter's shadow between 7 and 7.30 Eastern Time. The next night, Saturday, February 5th, the moon will be a bit fatter, a bit higher, and even closer to Jupiter. The next night, Sunday, February 6th, the moon will be fatter again and even closer to Jupiter, about 6 degrees to Jupiter's right. While you're out there gazing at Jupiter and the moon, remember that the moon, even though it's brighter and looks bigger than Jupiter, is really much smaller and much, much closer. Jupiter is 41 times wider than the moon, and the light from Jupiter will take over 46 minutes to get here Sunday night, while the light of the moon will take only one and a third seconds to make the trip from the surface of the moon to your eye. The next night, Monday, February 7th, the moon will be fatter yet and well above Jupiter. The moon will then be about four and a half days old and much brighter and fatter than when we started our moon watch on Friday the 4th. At the time the show was being written, it looked like the missing equatorial belt on Jupiter was on its way to flaring back up to normal appearance. Take a look at Jupiter and see for yourself if Jupiter has one or two dark bands along its equator. Although the reason why this happens is still not known, what happens is perhaps becoming a bit clearer. It's now thought that a white layer of ammonia covers up the darker gas layers underneath, causing the change in Jupiter's appearance. This has happened before, but it's not clear exactly why it happens. So get out and watch the skinniest new moon of the year next week, and then watch each night as it passes Jupiter in the evening sky. Keep looking up and say hi to the stars tonight. Make the Stars Your Own is available on DVD or VHS for $19.95. In addition, Stargazing with Jack Horkheimer, Cosmic Comics for the Sky Watcher is also available for $19.95.